everyone. Welcome back to Code With Me. We're going to be talking about forms today, how to create forms using HTML. And forms are kind of one of my favorite things about web development. Um, I come from a database programming background and because of that we have we have to be really really good at working with forms so that we can collect data and allow people to input data and uh, using forms is a very big part of a website user experience so for example on the Facebook homepage you actually have two forms you have this registration uh, form down here for the sign up and then you have this login form this login form is for members that have already created an, an account allows them to log in securely to their account using the HTTPS the secure um, connection and the sign up is again a very short form to entice new members if there are anybody out there who has not yet gotten a Facebook account um, it's very simple it always has been and they get the very basic information they need from you so that they can communicate with you so that they can um, have information that will uniquely identify you and then you can become a member of their website. Okay, so knowing how to make forms, again, very, very important. Uh, let's take one last look at a form that we all use frequently, and that is the Google search form or whatever search engine you like to use. Um, this is a very simple form. This is a text input with two uh, buttons on it, and let's just search for something. How to create a peanut butter sandwich. Okay, so Let's take a look at what I just did here. I used a, a text input to search, I clicked submit, and you'll see across the top of this browser URL, you get a really, really long, crazy URL. You started out with just google.com and now you end up with all this stuff. But if you take a look at what we have here, you'll see that the first thing you see is there's a question mark. And that question mark basically is telling the browser, hey, I've got a whole bunch of values, key value pairs coming your way. And you'll see some things like source equals HP. I'm not exactly sure what they're, what that information is. Oh, maybe that means home page. That's my guess. Um, and then there's like a bunch of different identifiers for the session or something along those lines. The important thing here is to note these AND symbols. These are where the key value pairs change. So it's kind of like putting a comma in here. So you'll see here AND Q. Q means query. Query equals peanut butter sandwich. So if you wanted to do anything in Google, you could say um, you could just get rid of this whole URL and do Q equals, um, let's see, peanut butter, because I have spaces in it, I have to use a plus, and it will run that query again without all that other nonsense that's all included in there, right? So if you ever wanted to do a Google query, you can formulate that query yourself and kind of use it as a hyperlink, which is pretty cool. But anyway, I wanted to let you know that this is called using a form method called get. And what that does is it passes our form values that we've input into the URL. And as you can see, it's not real secure, right? Anybody can kind of see what I'm typing. Um, if I was to type like my social security number, or my credit card number, I certainly wouldn't want it coming across this uh, browser URL uh, window. So the other way to use a form is through um, kind of like what Facebook's using is is by using post. Okay, so there's two form methods. One's get, and that's through the URL, and one is post, and that's kind of behind the scenes where this page kind of sends like a little packet of information to the next page that will process it. So let's go ahead and get started with our code and take a look at how this works. Uh, the very first thing you need when you're creating a form is you need to start with the form tag and this becomes the kind of the box that all of the form information and form elements are going to sit in and there are two attributes that you must include in the form tag. The first one is that one I was just talking about method. 
So method, we have the choice of get or post. Most cases, you're probably going to use post. So I'm going to go ahead and put post in here. If you're collecting any personal information from people, you're going to want to use post. And again, if you are uh, running a live website and you're collecting sensitive information, you're going to want to make sure you have a secure certificate on your website. Um, they usually cost you know, $100 or something a, month, uh, a year, and uh, a lot of times you can get them free depending on um, what other services that you might be using. Okay, so in addition to that method, you're going to want to have an action. An action is basically saying, where am I going to send this information? Okay, so if I click the submit button, what's going to happen? So you, what you want to do is you want to take it to another page that's going to process that information. So like we've seen here with our Google search, we're pulling up this probably an app that is using the, the search term, but when I go right to the Google form page, you don't see that until I start typing, until I type and submit, then it brings me to the search page. So you have to put in a page here. Now, we're not going to be necessarily um, coding the processing page of that because that's typically going to be PHP or some other uh, back-end programming language. But what we're going to do is if we just leave this empty, we can either leave it empty and it'll automatically come back to this page or we can just kind of put the same um, file name as the one that we're saving it as and that way it'll just kind of come back to this. Okay, we'll leave that as, as this for right now and then I'll kind of show you another way you can go around that in another video. Okay, so the first thing you, you want to do is you want to have a good idea of what information you're going to want to collect from your user. So let's just start with some, some basic information. And I'm going to put, um, I'm going to use this tag called legend. Now, one thing about HTML5 forms is they really improved them in HTML5 and they made it really much simpler for us to design forms and um, kind of do some data validation on forms. So I'm going to go ahead and put this legend and this is basically just like a little uh, piece of a little information um, that will kind of divide things up. So let me pull up my um, my page here so you can see what I'm doing. Save this and preview. Grab my preview page here. Okay, so you'll see all that's coming up so far is this customer information. It'll make a little more sense when we've got some other things here. Now there are two ways to um, to create what are called labels, and these labels are things that allow us to um, kind of put like. You know, again, when we're looking at the Facebook page, um, we've got this is a label where it says first name, last name, but your we have different ways of doing labels. So see how on, on the login, we've got the email or phone, that's a label, and it's not inside the box, whereas these ones are called are inside the box. So this on the top is called a label, but this inside the box is called a placeholder, and as soon as I start typing, it goes away. So I'm going to show you both how to use labels and placeholders. So here's label, and then what this is going to do is it's going to, it's going to show the uh, information right next to my input. Now the most typical input that you're going to use for a form is called a text. Okay, um, hold on. Let's make this customer name and let's call it name type equals text. Okay, so a, a form input doesn't have an opening and closing tag, tag. It just has, it's kind of similar to an image in the fact that you specify a bunch of attributes but you don't necessarily um, have any, any opening or closing. Okay, so there is my name and it is a box and we can continue creating labels and going from, from there. So if I want to do like label, you'll see here that the label, it says for city and then that basically attaches to the ID that you give it. 
Okay, so you need to have a name because what happens is that page that processes it, it needs to have a, a unique name to identify what the user has typed in. So here I've got my label for city. I'm going to type the word city in and then I'm going to put another input name equals city ID equals city. Again, that's going to match the four. Um, type equals text and let's do an example using a placeholder. Okay, so um, here we have name city. Now I'm going to do input type equals text and I'm going to do placeholder equals um, what do I want to call this? Let's call this, you know what, I'm going to move this up here. Street address. Okay, and I'm going to say ID equals address. So let me just move this line, control X to cut it, control C to paste it, and you'll see the difference. So here's that placeholder. I really like placeholders. I think they, they look cool, uh, a little easier to work with, and just like working with them a little bit better. Okay, and then we can do something like a uh, select, so a, a drop down box that has some options for you. Even though we kind of call it drop down box, it's all in HTML, it's called a select box. So let's say we have a select box, we can say name equals state, and we do option value equals. So um, I'm going to just do the West Coast here, so California, and look at how I'm doing this. They're very similar to like our lists. I have the value, so this is what's going to be passed behind the scenes, CA, but this is what people are going to be able to see. So, so here's my little drop down box, and right now there's only one thing in it, so it does California, and so if I want to do um, Oregon. And Washington. I like to kind of keep them in alphabetical order. That's what I've done. So California, Oregon, Washington. And again, if you only wanted them to see like the abbreviation, you could say California. So you can change these. Whatever's in between these tags will be what shows up in the box. Okay, and then Let's say I want to do another input name equals zip code uh, placeholder zip code. Okay, so we've got some very basic information here. Now you'll notice if I go through and start typing some information in here. What am I missing? Uh, nothing can happen until I put the submit button in. Okay, so the submit button is very, very important and it needs to be within our within our form. So I'm going to just put um, input type equals submit, and then we can pass. We can kind of program what we want the name to be. Um, join today. Okay, so that is my input join today. Now as soon as I click this it will, it's, it's going to tell me, it can't post anything, that's just my, um, that's my little thing for my, uh, my web server that says, hey, you're not doing anything here, I don't know what you're trying to do. Okay, so this is a very basic form with a couple different options. Um, there are many, many different types of form inputs that you can accept. Um, and HTML5 added a bunch of really cool ones like phone. And it kind of does a little bit of data validation on it so that we can we can sort of protect what information is coming. Um, we've got things such as a date, uh, email, files, uh, things like that. And I'll be talking about those in my next video and also show you how to style this. Okay, thanks. Bye.